Many of you already know pearly things, but for those of you who don't, she's a quite famous figure in the manosphere, basically repeating Red Pillar's talking points back to them as a woman, something they love, of course. That is her gimmick. Oh, look, she's so based, bros. And Pearly Things made a career out of it, thanks to the double digit IQ crowd in the manosphere. Another example of this was Georgia Free. Some of you are gonna remember her, trying to suck up to the manosphere, despite living a life completely opposite of what she was preaching. Pearly is like Georgia Free, but much bigger, both literally and figuratively. <laughs> she plays to the manosphere one of those females who grift off those groups. I love how females like Pearl take advantage of the simpish mentality of the Manosphere guys. Oh wow, a female repeating our talking points. She's so based bros. Another one was Georgia Free. Now she's gone and we have got Pearl the things. I held accountable for their poor decisions. Men are trash. That's common in society, right? Women are trash isn't. Men are held accountable all the time, every day. All these women are born with value. They're pretty already. As a man, if you don't make yourself valuable, you have no value. Women are born with value. Men That's must create early. their value. A guy doesn't lose his value just because he picks the wrong woman once. Just if men are attracted to youth, beauty, and fertility. It's been that way since the beginning of time. Men, men value purity and youth. Purity, youth, beauty. Last month, Britney Venti made a video about her, calling her the discount Andrew Tate. You know, I have been getting this talk about pearly things questions a lot, so this is a good opportunity. It is time, guys. I understand if you have to commit a criminal act to get laid. Now what? Oh my god, when you're 5'8", you have to commit a criminal act to get laid. Oh my god. I wish I said it first. I literally wish I said it first. Britney does a great job exposing her as a lying hypocrite who's chasing clout by regurgitating Red Pillar's talking points. But she doesn't do as good of a job refuting those talking points. It is an interesting hit job. I am not sure how I feel about it personally. Like, females can be really ruthless, man, with these emotional blows. But when it comes to addressing what Pearl has to say rather than what she is, Britney isn't nearly as effective as she probably thinks she is. I mean, I truly don't have a dog in this fight. I don't like either of them. That being said, her video is worth mentioning. So far, it is the best hijab done on Pearl on a personal level. People think I'm encouraging cheating. No! Like, I think if a woman cheats, she's trying to leave you. If a man cheats, yes, yes, yes. he's just like, it's, it's, like it's like a handshake. Yeah. <laughs> and men getting hard. Mm -hmm. So if they do what's hard, it's Ooh. valued. If we do what's easy, it's not. I am so enlightened by Pearl teaching us how being a man will magically eliminate all of the consequences of cheating. You know, like breaking your trust with your partner by lying to them, getting another woman pregnant that you now have to support, humiliating your wife, causing family dysfunction, and bringing home disease. The man cheats. Yes, yes. It's like a handshake. That is one hell of a handshake, Pearl. Pearl is truly one of the women in the manosphere who is popular because she says stuff that all the manosphere audience want to hear. But she is kind of right here. Man cheating is much harder than woman cheating. Imagine how easy it is for you to shake a hand or order a pizza. It is that easy for females to cheat. And women do want a man who can cheat. And that is why women get into relationships with men who cheat and treat them like garbage. And those females keep going back to that cheating chat. Britney can talk about all morals, consequences of cheating, but honestly, like, this is what women want. If you are a woman who puts out a lot, it doesn't say anything about your attractiveness. But if a man can cheat a lot, it does say something about him. So women choose men who cheat and often turn a blind eye to the so-called consequences of cheating rather than leave that chat and go date a guy who cannot cheat. You don't want men that don't cheat. Let's be real here. Men cheating is a sign of him being high SMV. Females cheating is not an indicator of that. Only indicator of her partner being sub-8 oofy doofy. She cheated because she was never attracted to the oofy doofy. Women don't cheat on men they don't want to lose. Men they love, which are good looking men, of course. This is yet another point Britney can't explain why Pearl is wrong. Pearl already says that she doesn't promote cheating. She's just telling women to pick better if they don't want to get cheated on, which is honestly the truth. I don't think it's different for men and for women cheating. No. I 
actually think that like women like to be cheated on. But Pearl didn't always have these takes. In fact, she used to say the polar opposite, especially about fresh and fit who she is now emulating. I know a lot of girls that actually waited till they were married and stayed a virgin until they were married. And I can tell you that the guys on Fresh and Fit podcast would never, they would never be able to pull a girl like that. It's interesting considering that Pearl's current branding revolves around telling women that their standards are too high and that if you want a high value man that you have to tolerate him cheating. I think it's safe to say that Pearl has changed her business plan in order to make money off of the manosphere because people's opinions don't normally change so drastically in morality, especially in such a short amount of time. Based on what I know through observation, her particular target audience is a male this is where Pearl's content and marketing sits. She is constantly hitting pain points and triggers. The challenges and the pain points for her particular customer, client, and fan is not being heard, not being seen, not feeling valued, and not having access to women. So she talks about this constantly, right? And she's talking to women, right? Women which this particular customer, client, or fan does not have access to and wants access to. One way to draw in this particular customer is to continue to hit this customer's pain point over and over and over. Pearl even talks about this business plan in an interview with Yahoo News saying that she didn't know what her business would be yet, but basically that she wanted to be an influencer and build a brand. The plan? Make money off of single men on YouTube by regurgitating their talking points about women back to them as a woman. Now, this is a brutal blow, man. She's literally describing those oofy doofy guys in the manosphere. Guys, you gotta understand, when you fall for grifters like Pearly, it is often just an act to chase clout. And Britney is 100% right. If you see a person change their opinions so drastically in such a short period of time, that person either has a very bad judgment or he is simply lying, which is more likely in this case. She nailed it. She is playing to the emotions of 70% of men. I had given you the breakdown of male demographics. She's playing to that 70%. This is a business for her. Her podcast directly talks to those men, tells them what they want to hear. Now, is she wrong on those opinions? That's a different question. But she is doing it as a business model, without a doubt. You just don't do a 180 on your opinions in such a short period of time. Especially when you consider the fact that her entire life is the opposite of what she preaches. Why? Because in reality, she is just trying to grift off the double digit IQ manosphere. She is exactly one of those modern women she is talking about. 26 years old, not married, childless, too picky, interested in hookup culture, not a virgin. We met up like the next week or something. And then yeah. we like started basically dating like immediately. When did you sleep with him? Um... I met him early December. I slept with him like midway through January, maybe. So he was already my boyfriend. Oh. You're probably wondering by now, where is Pearl's ring? Well, I'm here to inform you that Pearl is single and unmarried at 26 years old. And the reason I decided to go to therapy is because um, in the next like five to seven years, ideally, you know, um, some things are out of your control, but ideally I'd like to be married. According to her, is because she is too picky. You're single over a certain age, you're probably too picky. And I say that it's because she's too picky because she claims that 28 years old is pretty old to be getting married. What do men value? Third thing men value, youth. How are they getting youth? when the average age of first marriage for women in the US is 28.6 years old. And Pearl doesn't have much long-term experience in dating either. According to this interview on Yahoo News and what Pearl says online about her dating experiences on various podcasts, she's only had a couple of boyfriends. If you can do the math of her being 23 in the Yahoo interview, they couldn't have been that long considering she just turned 26 in the past couple of months. You know, Brittany does a great job exposing her as a hypocrite, but this could have been a better video if she could also attack her opinions rather than just her past or who she is. You can only repeat that she doesn't practice what she preaches so many times. I get that she's a hypocrite, a cloud chaser. Is she wrong though? That is the question. Even if she's saying them just for views, she's spitting facts. Three things men want in women. Looks, youth, purity. And she's also right. How modern women just spend their youth, minimizing their purity. And when their looks, youth, and purity fade away, and they are left with nothing, they marry an oofy-doofy. Earl is right there as well. 
oh, you are not married, so you can't talk about it. It's not a great argument, man. People do that shit to me all the time. Oh, bro, you don't have a GF. How can you talk about attraction dynamics when you can't even attract woman yourself? And why, why do they do that? Because they got nothing else. They can't attack argument itself, so they are going to attack the men instead. And that got me interested in knowing who is Pearl picking, considering that anytime a guy does something wrong, no matter what it is, she tells women to simply just pick better. Okay, so then you pick guys that cheat. I discovered that last year Pearl tweeted about a breakup she had, so I decided to go ahead and check the archives. And it turns out that Pearl actually got catfished by an obese man with two children on TikTok. Baby one, did we start dating? Yep, that's right. An obese man with two children on TikTok. And I point out that he's obese because Pearl is constantly dunking on fat girls. Why do I need to look at your roles? And then I have to go on social media. Then boom, whale. Boom, another whale. Like, have you never seen those videos of girls like shooting their shots at guys? No. Like, publicly? I was on TikToks and I did a video saying, you know what, when he's not doing this like comedic bit, he's actually kind of kind of fine. Like, I live in Chicago, you live in Chicago, we should like hang out. I am pretty confident that Pearl is referring to her ex, Wanya, in these instances because Wanya is from Chicago, like the millionaire ex she talks about in the video. There are multiple articles saying that Wanya was homeless when he was around 22 years old. I do find it funny that Pearl dating Wanya, or people know him as Angry Reactions, was framed as her bagging a rich one. Meanwhile, he actually moved on to date a more attractive redhead, and she's still single and unmarried. It seems like her advice on lowering her standards to get married isn't working out so well for her. Pearl has the absolute audacity to tell women to pick better when she literally got catfished by some girl's obese baby daddy on TikTok. This is like the ultimate stalking job. Kind of brutal, man. Females are ruthless. If they see a weakness, any personal weakness in you, they will try to destroy you for it. And he did move on to a better looking redhead as well. Brutal, man. But also kind of lame. Like, you don't have anything to say about why women shouldn't lower their standards, but you keep bringing up her past mistakes. Another example of Pearl misrepresenting data in order to demonize women is her saying that women primarily divorce men for money. I want to get married. Of course I want to get married. But like, if I was a guy, I would have a really hard time with it. And you could say it's the type of woman, but 50% of marriages end in divorce. Women leave the majority of the time. I don't think it's the type of woman. I think it's that they're paying women to leave. Or one of the number one reasons for divorce is financial and also when women out earn men. But the top reason for divorce on every site that I've checked didn't have that as even the top four. She's accusing Pearl of misrepresenting the stats, but in reality, it is herself doing that. Van Pearl says women initiate divorce for money and that they are paying women to leave. She means beta box deluxe, oofy doofy guys. And of course, the cause the official reason for that type of divorce won't show as financial problems on paper. Females will make up some BS excuse to get divorced and take half of his stuff. The financial problems stats she is citing is referring to divorces where the family is broke. Both of them are broke. Not referring to gold digger divorces. Not only does she regularly dunk on obese people, even taunting them in her TikTok bio before she got banned, but Pearl will even put all the blame on women for obesity in America, despite half the obese population in America being men. And despite her lack of self-care, she still likes to spout a lot of statistics about fat women, despite being corrected on this by Destiny on her live stream. There's a lot of fat okay. people. Fat no, people women, stay with women, fat people. But women by and large are fat than men no. women and if you go in the u.s the woman's always fatter the bmi no, so in the u.s statistics. the average bmi for a man is 26.6 and the average bmi for a woman is 26.5 oh i stand corrected but even after he corrected her she continued to misrepresent the statistic how can we say that as a whole in the u.s and the west we're good wives when 80% of us are overweight, and that's the number one thing that men value. There's a lot of room for improvement with Western women. 70% of us are overweight. The average man makes more than the average woman, but the average woman is fatter than the average man. 
So in the U.S., statistics. the average BMI for a man is 26.6, and the average BMI for a woman is 26.5. Oh, I stand corrected. Once again, it is not Pearl that misinterprets the stats. It is the studio scientist destiny. Studio statistician, man, I am telling you. I will get to him in a minute. I will dismantle destiny. Guys, I promise you this. Just like Jeremy Meeks promised you. I promise you. But back to the point, this just goes to show you that both Brittany, Destiny and Pearl don't even know what BMI is. When Pearl states the fact that females have an obesity problem and are way fatter than men, she's absolutely right. And statistically, she's right. And what does Destiny do? The studio scientist, Destiny brings up the BMI data, which shows American men at BMI of 26.6 and American women 26.5. Identical, only difference is 0.1. Negligible. But what he conveniently doesn't tell you is this. BMI is not an indicator of body fat. It is literally weight to height ratio. Men are supposed to have a higher BMI ratio. Men have bigger bone size and density, also higher muscle mass. Muscles are higher density than fat, so they are heavier than fat for the same uh, volume. A man, a healthy, healthy male, is supposed to have a higher BMI. Just the fact that this difference is negligible in America just goes to show you how out of shape American females really are. BMI calculations are not adjusted for gender and age and stuff like that. Like doctors don't take this number seriously. The fact that this difference between American women and men is basically zero just shows you how fat females are in the United States. It literally proves Pearl's point. Just to give you some benchmark so you can compare if you don't believe me. In healthy and developed countries like Japan, Switzerland, Denmark, man's BMI is a full, full 2 to 3 points, 3 points higher than women, not only 0 0.1. Why? Because the year females are not so out of shape. When women have identical or more BMI than men, you know their females have way higher body fat ratio which is the case in many African and Middle Eastern countries. Because in those countries, females get married early, make five children and don't leave their house ever again. America's numbers are much closer to African and Middle Eastern nations than they are to Japan or Switzerland. It is all third world underdeveloped countries where men don't have a significantly higher BMI. African and Middle Eastern countries. Because like females in the Middle East just pop five children and stay home forever. America is supposed to be a developed first world country on paper. <laughs> the fact that Destiny brings this BMI data just shows you how clueless he really is. I will make a separate video about him. I will dismantle that guy. And of course, people like Pearly Things, Britney and others on Fresh and Fit can't check him, bro. So he can freely run his mouth with nobody to check the guy. I just love how they expose themselves. Pearly is like, oh, I stand corrected <laughs> because she doesn't know what BMI is either. <laughs> Pearl was paying attention to Tyrone's anatomy during anatomy classes. That is what people like Destiny does, man. They cite numbers and studies they don't even understand to have some sort of gotcha moment. The average heights, and you look at the average partners, you're not finding that like all these women, it's like 15 average partners when you're six foot plus and only three partners for guys. Like even guys that were five two to five four, my short kings, no offense. Even those guys were on average like 9.1 partners. They were like four average partners away from the guys that were six I, five. I it's a 2015 study, evolutionary psychology, um, surveyed 60,000 people. So I'm keen to- So from, from what I understand, Destiny, you're saying that if the guy wants it to happen, to get more partners. I'm saying that if you take a guy who's 5'4", makes $36,000 a year, okay, and isn't that in shape, compared to like a fucking Giga Chad 6'2 guy, if the 6'2 guy is like, I'm gonna focus on work and I'll just fuck whatever comes my way, and the 5'2 guy is like, I'm gonna fuck everything I fucking oh, can. I don't I'm gonna think go any of us disagree with that. That short dude is yeah, gonna pull I mean, that, way there, more there, than that. Destiny does this all the time, man. Doesn't even understand what study he's citing. And he conveniently leaves out all the relevant data that proves him wrong. I call him a studio scientist, a studio statistician. In other stream, he was mentioning an online self-reported survey that shows short and tall men report the same median number of partners. And his conclusion is, height doesn't matter in the dating. Bro, like, even that paper itself states that numbers might be inaccurate. Because men lie, people lie. Like, even the study itself states that. 
when you look at actual preferences of women through dating apps, hookup apps, when you look at countless studies that show taller men faring better with women and having more options, then the truth is revealed. The taller the man is, more likely he is going to have offspring, more likely to have more matches on dating apps, more likely to get messaged first, more attractive women they get on dating apps. Like These are all based on actual data not stated numbers. He conveniently forgets to mention all the actual data that show real life, real life preferences, but somehow believes what men have to say regarding their partner count. Bro, like if I am getting interviewed, I am not gonna say zero. I will say 10, 20, 50, yeah, 50, I will say 50. I am not gonna say zero. If you catch me in real life and I will be like, black, wait, what? Black what? Bro, I don't know anyone with the name Bill. I don't know any black Bill. Please stay away from me. Like, I'm gonna deny it under any circumstances. This is the only time I can be myself without consequences. So in a way, you guys know me better than anyone else in this life. As sad as it is. But back to the point, men let's love this Cobra. Another one is Alpha M. He repeats the same BS. Oh, they report more partners. Oh, they seem as more friendly. Bro, like my Chihuahua also looks friendly. I will make a separate video on all those studio statisticians out there. Sadly though, uh, they are the ones who can push the narrative. They don't know what they are talking about. They don't even read the studies they refer to. And then some of you guys say, do we really need these studies to know the obvious? Bro, like I personally agree with you. If you see smoke coming out of your house, you ain't gotta go inside and take a video to know that there's a fire. But people like Destiny are what we are dealing with here. And these people are running amok. They are running the scene. They are getting millions of views. They twist numbers and stats. They will take one study, one study with self-reported, self-reported information and ignore tens of other studies that get their information from actual results and not what men have to say about themselves. Like. If you don't do this, nobody's gonna do it, bro. This is what you gotta understand. It just gets on my nerves whenever I am watching them. Blatant lies spread based on non-existent studies and numbers they misinterpret purposefully. And nobody says anything. Nobody on that channel says anything. Because they don't know jack shit either. Dude, like, shut the fuck up. You don't even know what BMI is. These people in these manosphere groups will purposefully misinterpret data and stats to lie and grift. Another one of those studio scientists, Hamza. Did you think claims nofap is more powerful than literal steroids? Clearly they didn't even read the study he cites from. All studio statisticians just to be able to charge you 700 to tell you not to touch your meat. He's claiming that nofap, he calls it semen retention by the way. <laughs> He claims that it increases your test by 400%. Yes, 400. <laughs> We need to discuss the single biggest reported testosterone increase out of every study so far. There is one practice that has been shown to 400% your testosterone. That means if you have a 500 nanograms of testosterone, this practice has been reported to increase it up to 2000. That is a steroid level increase. I'm surprised that this hasn't like taken over the internet with this study. And what is it? It's semen retention. So the problem with this particular study that a lot of people don't seem to realize I mean, there's a lot of different things you could say about it when you really analyze things in more detail, but probably the main issue is that the study doesn't actually exist. This semen retention study found a 40% increase, not 400, and even then it was temporary and fell back to baseline fairly quickly. So if you find no fat beneficial for whatever reason, whether it's confidence, mood, productivity, libido, then by all means go for it. But this insane idea that you're gonna achieve some huge steroid-like increase in testosterone, that's really just clickbait nonsense and it's not supported by any actual data. Oh wow, you are so smart, bro. You cracked the code, man, you cracked it. <laughs> Why hasn't this taken over the internet? Truly a groundbreaking discovery. Steroid producers hate him. <laughs> Guys, forget about TRT, Tran and Clan. Guys, just stop fapping. <laughs> and I love how he tries to give it a legitimate, more scientific sounding name to be taken seriously. <laughs> Semen retention. <laughs> you are so smart, brother. How didn't professional athletes think about that? Oh, of course, they are not as smart as you. <laughs> oh, why do you talk about studies? Because if I don't, these studio scientists are running the scene if I don't. I will make a separate video on both Destiny and Hamza. I will dismantle those guys and all the other studio statisticians out there. But let's continue. Pearl speaks on men valuing attractiveness, purity, and youth and says in order to get a high value husband, 
or husband at all, you should be those things. Pearl fails to meet these standards herself despite wanting to get married so badly. Apparently, if I want results in life, I have to start talking to boys. Yeah, wife me up if you're, if you're in the London area. Oh. In terms of purity, Pearl's not a virgin. In fact, she's so reluctant to say her body count that she's willing to just lie. How many people have you slept with? Do you hear this out? <laughs> no. You ask everybody that. And you don't say your own number? <laughs> what? Um, no, I don't ask everyone. I don't think I've ever asked. No, I don't even ask body count. If Would you say your body count? I, I don't know. No. No. <laughs> no, I don't even ask. Um, I'll always say how many bodies is too many bodies. So I have a question. Would you guys say your body count? No. So if it doesn't matter, like, why don't people just say it? She chose to lie because she felt embarrassed. And despite Pearl preaching about the importance of women's chastity, Pearl actually wanted to partake in hookup culture. But I swear to God, like, guys don't try to sleep with me. Really? <laughs> like, 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 I swear to God, I've been on a date, and I, w I would have been dead, and you just never tried. I was like, oh, okay. I've been on a date to a guy didn't even touch me once. Yeah. He didn't touch me once, and I'm like, yeah. Hey, I don't really have guys approach me often. It, it could be the clothes. It seems like she barely knew him and wanted to hook up with him, but he didn't want to. So, according to Pearl, I guess we shouldn't be taking her advice considering that she can't attract men even for casual encounters. I've noticed a lot of therapists are like older single women, and I'm kind of like, if you can't maintain a relationship, why would I take advice from you? Yo, I am not gonna lie though, Brittany was ruthless with this one. This is brutal, man. She executed that perfectly. Like, you gotta give her credit here. She did her research on Pearl, came with the receipts. Making a video like this is not easy. You gotta go through her streams, her videos. You gotta dig up her past, her appearance in other streams. Britney's most videos are just trash, but she did the work with this one. People don't understand the work, man. These videos don't just appear on your drive on their own. Those one one episodes you guys love, they take so much time to make, you don't understand. I gotta read the papers fully to not look like a clown like Destiny. I gotta read the limitations, the methodology, what they are controlling for, what they are not controlling for. I gotta watch hours of content to use in the video, recording, editing. This stuff ain't easy, man. Even though she couldn't address Pearl's manosphere points, uh, I could tell making a video like this took her quite a bit of time. This is on female on female crime. This is legit dedicated hater stuff, I feel like. It almost feels personal. I sense a little bit of jealousy causing this. If you know Britney Venti, she had her own based face. Just like Pearl, she also used to play to those thread anti walk guys in the manosphere. Except Pearl became much, much more successful than she ever was. I think there's a little bit jealousy. Does Brittany say the same for her boyfriend about dunking on fat woman? Of course not. But when Pearl does, it is a problem. One could say the same about her. A cloud chaser female LARPing as a thread anti walk when she is leading a personal life opposite of that. But when Pearl does, it is a problem. I feel like Pearl is what Britney always wanted to be. As influential as her, as big as her, but she could never get there. And this fact triggers Britney, because in her mind she's more attractive than Pearl. Therefore she's more deserving of that male attention. Which is why you see Britney hammering her looks over and over again throughout the entire video. But clearly there is one thing that money cannot buy. And that thing is taste. This video is from Pearl's channel called Wife School. In the first episode, she and Allie, known as Real Femme Sapien on YouTube, meet up to improve on Pearl's fashion, along with a male stylist who is supposed to be helping Pearl attract a husband by improving her outfits. Yes, he's Troy Francis, by the way, the self-proclaimed stylist, PUA, and a dating coach. He's everything at the same time. So let's take a look at some of the outfits he puts her in. Perfect for a night out on the town. I'll do the full for us. <laughs> this dress looks like a trash bag. Mm -hmm. What kind? Of, where would I go with this outfit? I think you know. I think that could be an afternoon. I think that could be an evening outfit. I mm -hmm. think you could, you could go out in Shoreditch wearing that. You could go to Canary Wharf to one of the bars down there. Mm. Meet some nice high value guy. He looks at her with a straight face, telling her she's going to meet a high value guy in this outfit. Oh, it'll look nice going out for errands and having a nice dinner. He's just talking out of his ass. So, what do we rate this? One to ten. I reckon it's a high eight. Like, I don't know how a stylist can honestly rate these outfits so high. Oh, that's now it, now it's good. Now it's good. Spin, spin, not too fast. Okay. <laughs> he must think that she's a dumpster because he keeps putting her in trash bags. 
Yo, no BS. When I saw Troy Francis there as her stylist, I was like, damn, this is gonna turn ugly. <laughs> if he's as good at being a stylist as he's at being a PUA, a dating coach, this is gonna turn ugly for Pearl. <laughs> and I was not surprised. The stylist doesn't apply this knowledge or even utilize basic color theory, and instead, he takes her to a cheap, fast fashion store like Zara. If he were actually good at his job, he would not be making these mistakes. Honestly, he just does her dirty the entire time. You can bring balance back to the body by drawing the attention to the most attractive body parts and away from the least attractive ones using color, patterns, texture. But of course, he would know that if he actually knew what the hell he was doing as a stylist. It's honestly just so frustrating watching him not look smacks her. And of course, Troy uh, is putting her in trash bags because he's a fake stylist just like he's a fake dating coach. He's putting his oofy doofy Inkwell clients in trash bags also. He puts them in emotional trash bags. Pearlie ain't the only one he puts in a trash bag. <laughs> I will tell you that. So if she wants to be taken seriously, she should care about her overall presentation, including her fashion, hairstyle, her attitude, and bodily self-care. This situation is so deeply embarrassing and desperate. She has no business telling other women how to attract a husband. I wanted to give Pearl credit for trying to improve on her fashion, but she makes it really hard to do so when even months after this video, she continues to show up on camera with her hair undone, unbrushed, stuck to her head, no volume, even at the very end of the video, too much personal attacks on her looks. Like, I understand the entertainment aspect. A couple of you guys linked me this video saying a pearly got destroyed, but honestly, I'm not sure. Okay, she, Brittany, keeps ripping on her, but never addresses what she has to say. It is all about what she is, what she looks like, her past, her mistakes, and such. People are so ruthless, man. Remember when I made a video about Hammerhand? I only brought up legitimate counter arguments and not a single personal attack. And I easily could have, I have easily could have made a brutal roasting video if I wanted. I could have brought up his family members. If you don't know, he got doxxed and out of dirty laundry came out. I could have said, who are you to have this opinion when your family members are doing this and that? But that is cheap stuff, man. That is not what I do. I see why it gets clicks though. People want drama. People just want fast food on YouTube. People don't want to see Brittany talk about stats and logic. They just want her bounce twins and roast someone. And this is why I don't want to reveal too much information about myself. The less people know about you personally, the more they will have to focus on what you have to say rather than what you are. I don't know, I wanted to make a video about this because I have seen this posted a couple times already. I also get a lot of requests about Pearly, so there you go. I will make a separate video on those studio intellectuals and statisticians later on, but till then, stay true.